Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Consolation Church. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this third Sunday of Easter, we once again see the risen Lord appearing to the disciples. In breaking open the scriptures for the disciples, Jesus dispels their greatest fears and doubts and gently brings them into the fullness of true peace. Because of this, they now have the courage to proclaim him before the world, to become his witnesses. And courage and peace are the hallmarks of the believer and are the gifts necessary to face the challenges of this world. May this same courage and peace that we have received from the Holy Spirit Help us as we live our, our faith each day. Join us next Saturday, April 20th, for the annual Night at the Races, hosted by our Knights of Columbus. Horses are available for purchase at the door. Name your horse and come to see them win on our huge new projection screen. Admission is $10 and includes door prizes, trivia, food, beverages, and loads of fun. This fundraiser benefits our parish and local charities. Due to the First Holy Communion Retreat, the 9.30 a.m. Mass at St. Malachi will be celebrated at Our Lady of Consolation Church next Sunday, April 21st. Friday, May 31st, OLC is going to see Sight and Sound Theater's production of Daniel. Tickets are available until Sunday, April 28th. That's only two weeks away. To reserve your tickets, please check your email for the sign-up link or contact the rectory. Please see Adriana McCall with any questions. Please see the bulletin and check your email for parish and community events. Today's Mass is in memory of William Mortimer at the request of Halter Rohrer families. Our celebrant is Father O'Neill. Please stand as we begin our celebration. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Our entrance hymn for today's celebration is Agnes Dei. It can be found in the Praise and Worship Book A4. Praise and Worship Book A4. Please stand and join in our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this morning, this third Sunday of Easter, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves 
to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all, t to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Since the beginning of time, human beings have invented many things to make our lives in some way better, more comfortable, things to help in the areas of science and health as well. We know also, unfortunately, that the human mind has been used for for evil and for bad things as well. But for overall, the things that we have tried to do as trying to make life better, including ways of extending our lives as long as we can through better ways of eating and living, things again in, in the fields of science and medicine, but of course, nobody has ever had the ability 
to invent something that would keep us living forever, even aging. You know, I see people that haven't seen me in a while, and like, wow, you're getting pretty white. Like, that's because that's all wisdom. Because I'm with the wisest people in OLC, you know. It's all that wisdom I'm surrounded by. And no matter what infomercial you look at at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. rather, you know, with the, the Botox or whatever, you know, we all age. So there's nothing that's going to help us in the aging process. We're all in one shape, way, shape, or form <laughs> disintegrating, right? That's not a, a nice thought at 8.30 in the morning, but it gets better. Because Jesus is the only way that gives us eternal life. And we notice something as we look at these readings. First of all, let's put this reading in context a little bit. Because for the last couple weeks, we've been hearing from the Gospel of John. Beginning on Easter Sunday, and then last week, when Jesus appears first to the disciples on Easter Sunday... And then the following week when he sees Thomas and allows him to see his wounds, etc. Well, this week, we're picking up right after the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. We're walking along as Jesus came up next to them and started conversing with them. And they didn't recognize who he was at first. In fact, they even say, are, the, are you the only one in this area who hasn't heard of the things that have happened over these past days? And he asks them, well, what, what sort of things? And they start to tell him about what happened to Jesus of Nazareth and how they had come to believe that he might be the Messiah, but that he was put to death. But they even say to him, some of us have amazed us, some women in our group have told us that he has risen from the dead, and they were at the tomb, and he was not there. And then Jesus kind of scolds them and says, Oh, how slow you are to believe. Was it not necessary that the Christ should have to suffer? And he goes through all the scriptures and explains everything that pertained to him. And then as he was walking along, as if he were going further, they invited him into their home, and they recognized him only in the breaking of the bread. And he disappeared from their sight. And they said, were not our hearts burning when he spoke to us and broke and opened the scriptures for us along the way? And what did they do? They ran back to the rest of the group in the upper room. And that's where our gospel picks up today. They didn't recognize him at first. It was only in the breaking of the bread. And as they are explaining to the rest of the group there, Jesus appears to them. He's not bound by the doors, the walls, or any locks or anything. He just appears in their midst. And they don't recognize him. They think he's a ghost and they are fearful. He shows them his wounds. He tells them, peace be with you. And he even says, do you have something to eat? So there's something for us, right? There's going to be food in eternity. That's good. But as our Lord now is made known to them, he too explains the scriptures and rebukes them similarly as he had done to the two walking along the way. And he explains to them everything that needed to happen. Again, they didn't recognize him. They knew it was him. They saw his wounds. They saw him eat in front of them. But there was something different about him. And we know that when a person has truly been set on fire for their faith, when the Holy Spirit has truly filled their hearts, 
that there's something different about them. Sometimes they even look differently because the joy that presence of God, that quiet kind of power within them, not power in a, uh, in a overruling kind of way, but power in a sense that God is with them and a humility that's there as well, sort of there. We know it when we see it. It's hard to explain, just as it would have been very difficult for these, di- these disciples to explain as it probably was for those first two as they were trying to explain what they had encountered when they encountered Jesus on the way. And they too would be transformed by the Holy Spirit. We will continue to hear all throughout the Acts of the Apostles. We will see these frightened men turn into bold proclaimers of the Word. Bold witnesses, which Jesus calls them at the end of this passage, to the resurrection. Because they've been transformed, they've been changed. Certainly, even if people in their own families had seen them, they would say, you know, you're different. Because the Holy Spirit was fully alive within them. And our Lord wants that for each of us as well. That's why we come together each week. And so, how do we allow that eternal life that he has given to us, which, by the way, that glory that he has won and that resurrection, that new life that he had won, was not solely for himself. It was for us that we might one day be in glory. That's why we pray for all of our deceased loved ones every day, that they who had the hope of eternal life given to them in baptism. We still continue to use the symbols of this new life, of baptism, all throughout the Easter season. Easter is something that's so great that it takes us 50 days up to the Feast of Pentecost to celebrate it. But in reality, we celebrate that every time we celebrate Sunday Mass, any time we celebrate Mass, we are celebrating the resurrection. And so that new life that our Lord wants for us, He wants us to hold on to that. He wants that life to continue to grow within us. And we hear in all three readings something very important, something that obviously we focused on during Lent to prepare us for this time, but something that really is needed. If there's a secret to uh, the fountain of youth, at least spiritually speaking, it is repenting from our sins and staying close to the Lord. As we hear in the first reading, as we hear in the second reading from St. John, to follow the commandments that God has given to us. Sometimes we are stubborn and we don't want to give that over. Sometimes we think we know what's best. Or we just kind of put aside what the Lord has passed down to us through his teachings which he has given to us through the church. Jesus, even here in the gospel, sends his disciples to go and call people to repent. And so that is always part of our life, to readjust, to make that life continue to be fully alive within us. And it's fitting that he speaks to us about coming to us and, it, and very important that he comes to us as he does in the Eucharist. Because we can't live without Jesus. We can't live without eating. If we try to do that for any length of time, we know that we would become very sick. And if we did it for too long, we would no longer be alive. That's why we need him. That's why he feeds us with himself. And that is the foretaste of eternal life. And so we rejoice today on this beautiful Sunday in Easter. We ask the Lord today to help us to continue to be fully alive, to be transformed, but also to continue each day to maintain that life within us by following him.
by reflecting on what needs to change. Where is that new life of the Spirit not really fully, fully there? Where does it need most to be in my life and in yours? We ask the Lord Jesus, our risen Lord, our hope, to lead us and guide us today and each day. My dear brothers and sisters, together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, God substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, by his death and resurrection, took away the sins of the world. In his name, we pray to God our Father for all the needs of the church and of the world. For the church that in her ministry of forgiveness, she may continue to heal those whose spirits are broken and bring them the true peace of the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, that the Easter message of the risen Christ might resound throughout the world and that peace may reign over violence and hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in who find it impossible to overcome habitual sin, that they may take new heart this Easter from Jesus, our risen Lord, who takes away their sins and puts new hope and courage into them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family of Our Lady of Consolation, that a greater spirit of forgiveness may permeate us and that the sign of peace that we share at this Mass may be a witness of others of our desire to forgive others as our Lord has forgiven us. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmande, that their family sponsors and one eight catechists, that they may be prepared to receive the Holy Spirit as they complete their retreat this weekend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and the religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our men and women who serve in the military, and for all police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and first responders, that the Lord may guide and protect them as they serve and protect us daily. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Rebecca Butzik and Joan McCartney, and for all those named in our bulletin, that they may receive the grace of God's healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially William Mortimer, the intention for this Mass, and for Nick Gregor, 
and for all the faithful departed, that they may have heavenly rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the special needs and intentions that we offer now in the silence of our hearts. For these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we make our prayers to you, confident that you forgive us our sins and that you are the cause of our peace. We ask this through your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Three Days. It can be found in the Breaking Bread Book number 568. Breaking Bread Book number 568. Please join in singing. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rise in the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We especially remember today William Mortimer. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of, the, of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. I still need that. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. I'm going to say the word of my soul. Our communion hymn is We Belong to You. It can be found in the Breaking Bread Book number 642. Breaking Bread Book number 642. Please join in singing.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Thank you to Donna for proclaiming the word as our lector today, to Sue Havey for serving as our minister of communion, to Scott Ray uh, for serving here at this mass, the altar, thank you. Um, to Michelle and to Steve for serving as our ushers, and of course to our music ministry. Uh, a little tired after the retreat this weekend, at least some, some aspects of our uh, music ministry. And of course, uh, thank you to Julie for uh, taking care of our live stream. We thank all of our live streamers for being with us. We continue to pray for you, especially those of you who are ill or uh, homebound. Uh, and also we continue to pray for our uh, Soon to be confirmed young people who participated in the retreat. All right, had to brace myself for that one. Um, and we continue to pray for them that as they receive the Holy Spirit and Sacrament of Confirmation on April 27th, uh, they too may be transformed in their faith. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a great rest of your Sunday and a great week. St. Michael. The Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snare of the devil. May God and you can be humbly pray. Should you go, for the sin of the ghost. And the power of God, get to the help of Satan. And all the evil spirit, to prowl about the world, seeking their own of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is Alleluia, Alleluia. It can be found in the Breaking Bread Book number 175. Breaking Bread Book number 175. Please join in singing. <laughs>